Okay. Here we go. All right, this has got to be it. I don't think I'm going to touch this phone anymore today. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay, so please hop back on. Hey, what a morning. Okay, much better. Thank you for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. Let's just make sure I'm tight. Okay, a little bit of a rocky start, but we should be good to go. All right, so in honor of St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to start this all over again. I'm using um, the retired paper forever greenery because there's a lot of greens in here and i woke up this morning thinking oh i could do a st patrick's day theme for this card that i wanted to do with you today so it's a way to use up your strips i have some half inch strips here this one looks a little crooked i'm going to cut that again um and so half inch strips or you can use three quarter inch strips but um i am tweaking the card to go a little smaller than I originally saw it. So I'm going to be using half inch strips. There we go. Much straighter. See, I had, oh, here's the hints, guys. I always like to give you little hints. I noticed this was crooked, right? So sometimes when we're using our scraps, sometimes we might like cut something with scissors or we might, um, cut it on an angle on purpose or whatever. What I tend to do is any scraps that I put back in there, with the exception of this one, I, this one skipped me, my attention, I always try to make sure that things are straight. Like even if I were to just cut this with scissors, I would then maybe do a, a quick trim with my trimmer because when I go to use it again, I don't want to find out while I'm putting it on my project that it's crooked. Or I will make it at such an angle that it's very obvious that it's not straight. So that's just one of my things that I like to do. So, brood for you. Cheers to St. Patrick's Day. I thought of this as I was waking up this morning. I said, oh, I don't think I have time to do everything I had to do this morning, plus start the new card. So I'm doing this fresh right in front of you. We're going to see how it works. Okay, so we have, this is a two-step stamping. You have your beer mugs. You have a regular glass, if you want. You have this other kind of glass for specialty beers. And, of course, you have your... Um, growler, I guess they call that, right? And then you have things to fill it in. So I chose crushed curry for that beer color. And I was going to try a little soft suede to maybe look like, look like Guinness. All right. So I am going to, at some point, get a new crushed curry. This is an old pad and see how it's kind of getting a little bumpy. This has been around for years and years and years. So time for a new pad. I'm going to make sure that it's not retiring first. <laughs> Because if it is, I don't know if I'll bother or I might just get it anyway because I do like that color. It is a nice golden color when you want to do some things. Okay, well, thanks for coming back on again. I see 13 of you. We had a little bit more, but that's okay. Third time's a charm. Yes, lucky charm, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, so here's our, our filler. And we're going to just lay that on top of the beer mug, lining up the little bevels in the glass. Okay, see, look how nice that is. And you know, I'm going to do two just because I stamped this in smoky slate just to get, um, I didn't want it full black because it's supposed to be a clear glass. And I thought the smoky slate just gave the idea of, you know, enough of the shadowing so we can see the edge of the glass. Okay, so there's the IPAs or the ales, whatever you like. Oh, there's the phone. <laughs> One of those days, guys. One of those days. Okay, now, let's just try one in soft suede. I don't know if it's going to look like stout, the Guinness stout or not, but we don't know until we try, right? Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to experiment and stamp off a bit first. Okay, let's see. Let's see which one we want. It does look dark like stout. Yeah, that looks like the coffee I'm drinking today. 
<laughs> a little bit of cream and and light. So I don't know. Let's do a, a dark one. So this is soft suede. Early espresso is our darkest, but I don't think we want that that dark. Okay, so soft suede it is. We'll see how that goes. Okay. All right, because it's next to the other beers that are light, I think it'll work. I probably wouldn't do that alone. It might look a little weird, except to an avid, knowledgeable beer drinker, then they get it. But otherwise, it might look a little odd. Okay. I've cleaned off my stamp, and now we have dies that can cut that. And... There we go. And then we'll run that through the die cut machine. So like I said, I may have had this all done ahead of time had I thought of it yesterday. But, oh well. We're here for a card and to chat. And it's all casual. That's it. That's what live is. I go with the flow. Okay, so when you're using your plates, the white one's on the bottom, then you make a sandwich with your clear plates. Just line that up there. If you think your die is going to slip a little bit, then secure it with a little piece of washi tape. And then run it through. I'm going to turn this around because I'm going to crank with my left hand. There's more room. Okay. Somebody said... You're cranking with your left hand and you're right-handed. I said, well, that's because my right hand is stronger. I could hold the machine more secure. Which hand do you guys um, crank with? Okay, and if you're left-handed or right-handed, sometimes it depends on your workspace, right? And, um, and I'm fairly ambidextrous, too, so maybe that's not a problem for that because of that. I can write fairly well with my left hand. I, oh, it looks like root beer. Oh, there you go. Good idea. Thank you, Jackie. Excellent. You can say to somebody, I'm rooting for you. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Hold my left hand, crank with the right. Okay, anything. And you're right-handed. Yeah, it's funny, things you get used to. Sometimes just because where your machine is, it makes sense to do one way or the other. And then maybe you just get used to that. Okay, I'm just going to tear this off. See, like a piece like this, if this was just something left over, I would leave this in my scraps and it's noticeably not straight. Um, or I would use my trimmer to trim it off. I, I wouldn't leave it like just with scissors cut and it might not be perfectly straight. All right, um, I really only need two of these beers, but since I'm here, I'm gonna cut the third one. I'll use it for another time. And it's my son-in-law's birthday coming up in a few days, and we're kind of celebrating tonight, so I was gonna give him a different card, but maybe this will be the one. Who knows? We can change our mind, right? <laughs> Okay, you're on projectress too? Okay, Betty. Yeah, well, you do what works. I, I It's funny because I didn't even think about it until this gal, you know, mentioned, um, noticed that I was cranking with my left hand. I don't know, either way you get the job done, right? That's what's important. Okay, so now we have some foam that's going to go on the top of there. Of course, you need a little head on the beer. And make another scratch piece of paper. And I will stamp that again. Hmm. There you go. That's the one. I haven't used this stamp set a whole lot. Could you tell? I did some, I did, the, I used it once, but see, that's going to go right on top of there. It's going to look cute. I'm wondering... If I should use the gray again or the crushed curry. So when in doubt, you look at both. Just do it. 
Some people say, how do you come up with all your ideas? Well, a lot of it's just trial and error. You say, gee, I wonder if this will work. You do it. And then, and then you try it out and make your decision. Let's do some in Smoky Slate. I'll clean off my stamp. Now, I cut my chamois in kind of in a, in a third. I cut a third off and I cut that in half so that I can just do a little quick cleanup like this when I need to. And let's try the, the gray. Smoky Slate. We'll cut them out and try it and see. Um, we may, we should do one in the, in the, um, soft suede also, shouldn't we? Okay, that's already cleaned off. Was it? No, it wasn't. But, okay, I'm cleaning it here. The brown is lighter. And, you know, I'm going to do it on the other side, stamped off. That might be better. Okay, so second generation stamping, we call that. All right. Let's close up everything so we don't make a mess. You don't want to drop your ink pads and get them on the floor, and you don't want to get your arm in it or get it on your project. All right, let's see what happens here. Thanks for your patience. The suspense is, is unbearable, right? And Holly uses both hands for cranking. Right, either way. All right. Crank her up and see what happens. Get a mini. You need to hold on to a little tighter, obviously, because it's a lighter machine. But it is nice to have it handy. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's cool. That looks good. Let's do the others. I'll do one gray and one curry, and we'll see what we like best. You guys can weigh in. Nice to have helpers. Okay. Especially the small dies, I find little washi tape to hold it in place is helpful. And also when you're using the mini, you don't have as much plate surface to grab it. Right, let's see here. Okay, we got that. That looks pretty good. And my other option probably should have been the, the crushed curry stamped off to make it even lighter. But I'm not going to take the time to do that now because I have other cards I want to show you too. Okay. Put the machine aside. Okay, let's see what we like. Okay, the gray or the curry bubbles. I think I know what I like. Okay, the brown's going to get the brown for sure. And I was never sure if this should go over the glass or under. I'm going to put it under. Okay, you like the gray? Gray? Yep. Okay, yeah. Gray. Okay, it's a win. We got enough votes. We're doing gray. I'll put this aside, and I stamped another gray so I could pop that out later. All right, so our card is going to start with your regular card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And like I said, this card can be done right on have one layer but just to make it a little bit more interesting I put another layer on there and so I'll go to my handy dandy cello bag of pre-cut layers I have 
some at five and a quarter by four, and then the next size down, five by three and three quarters. So I have a go-to stash. It's getting a little low, so I'm gonna have to redo that. So that's gonna be another layer on there. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our strips. So if you're crafting along, I mentioned that you should just have some strips handy and we would cut the lengths. We are basically going to do two strips down, two strips across. We're going to cut these, okay, obviously. And then we are going to, this is upside down, but that's okay. Then we'll put our die cuts here and our sentiment here. All right, so first thing you want to do is do your sentiment. So this one says another round for your birthday. So I'm going to use that. And that will fit here. The reason I said nothing more than two and a half by two is because you know, once you put your little die cuts in here, you don't have a whole lot of space here. You can use something bigger and you'll see me do that later, but you can also use something small too. All right, so just so you know how it's kind of going to be laid out, you can stamp your sentiment first because once you glue everything down and you stamp later and it's a mistake, there's very little going back. I mean, there's always stuff you could do, but you'll have to start over. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stamp that up there, and I'm just going to use, um, um, I'll use black. I was considering using the brown, but I'm just still going to use the black. I did a Cards for Troop um, event yesterday at a local coffee shop. So some of my stuff is still kind of packed from there. I just had to go to my bag and pick that up. We made 40 cards and a gal brought five that she had done at home to donate. And I'm looking to make it an, a, a weekly thing. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, over at the coffee shop. Okay, let's see if I can get this straight. It always helps if I keep my paper straight also. And you know what? Again, I'm going to test this out on scrap paper first. Because sometimes, especially when a stamp is new, there could be some little residual oils on there from processing. And sometimes it takes a little time for it to kind of rub off and accept the ink properly. That looks pretty good. So we're good to go. If I can only get it that straight on my card, right? <laughs> Annette! Oh my gosh. Hello. Nice to see you. Hi, Laura. Thanks for signing on. You guys get entered into a raffle when you sign on and say hello. Hey, continue whatever conversation you want as well. Okay, send thumbs up if you like something or hearts if you love something. Okay, so there's my sentiment. I got it straight. Yay. Okay. My luck is turning around. Yay. Okay, so now our strips, we want them. They don't have to be exactly these sizes. It's okay if it's slightly shorter or longer, but we want two long strips, so... And we're go I'm going to make them each a slightly different, um, slightly different length, so it's not you know too rigidly straight. So um, one is going to be four and three quarters. So I think I'll make this um, the outside one is going to be four and three quarters. I'll make that one the inside. You might want to just kind of figure out what order you want things in. I'm going to make this one on the top and that one on the bottom. Okay, so your outside one, four and three quarters. So, for new people who joined on, happy St. Patrick's Day. And thank you for coming back from my glitches. You know, stuff happens. Okay, four and three quarters by a half an inch. And then the next one, four and a quarter. Again, it can be slightly more or less or whatever you want, as long as it fits on that card front there, right? Okay, then the horizontal ones. I have three and a quarter for the bottom one. And three inches for the top one. Okay, so Annette, oh, hi, Melinda, joining in again. 
So, Annette, last St. Patrick's Day, I was up to you. I was up with you on St. Patrick's Day a year ago. It's the last time I saw you, hon. You made some Irish soda bread for me. Yum, yum. That's a real friend. I stopped in the bakery. I said, can I pick up some Irish soda bread? She said, I already made it. Thank you, bag you. <laughs> That's our endearing term for each other. You say we call each other an old bag. Aside from the fact we kind of are, but that's okay. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. All right, so that's going to be our layer. And then we'll arrange some of those beer mugs around there. Okay, so I'm going to glue those down. Oh, wait. We are actually going to weave these. Um, so I'm not going to put glue down on the bottom. I'm just going to put glue on the top. So then we're going to weave these in there. They might be seen. They might not be seen, depending on how you put your die cuts. But just in case part of it can be seen, I think it's a nice little touch. So starting with your outside one, make sure you have room. You're not going to cover your sentiment. If you have to tweak it, just trim these a little shorter, a little more narrow. Okay, Stampin' Bag, thank you. <laughs> Stampin' Martha Bag, right? <laughs> hey, Annette, yesterday I went out to lunch with some friends and it was Martha's Cafe. How about that? <laughs> we teach each other, call each other Martha, Martha Stewart. <laughs> because we, we do little nicey little things. So, yeah, Martha's Cafe in Arbutus. So, it was a lovely day yesterday. I, oh, see, just what I said not to do. Don't put the glue under there. I did. I'm going to lift that up a little bit. Oh, I need my pepper upper tool. Okay, so we had stamp, we had cards for troops from 10 to 11. And I went walking with some friends and we went to lunch at Martha's Cafe. Quaint little thing, kind of like your old-fashioned dinery cafe. And it was nice. Had a Caesar salad. All good. Okay, take your pick tool. has this handy little paddle at the end. The other side is your pointy poker tool, I call it. <laughs> so when you need to pick something up, that's a good thing. All right, so now we're going to take this one and weave it under one and over the next. And then this one's going to go the opposite way. So I'm going to leave some room there. Let's put some glue down. And you're distracting me. <laughs> That's okay. I taught for 30 years. I'm used to distractions, right? <laughs> Just go with the flow. Got to, Got to do it. Keep going. All right, so now this one's going to go over that one. So I'm going to glue that one back down. And then this is going to go under, over that one and under the other. It looks like a little weave. All right. You can make this higher up if you want to. I just want to leave room because my beer mugs are kind of tall. Okay, gluing that back down. I have a little smudge of glue up there, so I'm going to later on get my glue eraser. It's still packed in my bag. Okay, that's going to go on my card front. And then we'll put our beer mugs on there. Yep. Yeah, I think multitasking is one of women's fortes. I actually read a psychological article that said women definitely are better. It's not just a stereotype. Better than men at multitasking. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's better to just concentrate on something, right? Uh, I think I got my glue eraser there, too. All right, so let's put our foam on the mugs. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back here. For those who are joining in a little later here, we made a Guinness Stout and we made <laughs> another type of beer over there. Actually, I live in Baltimore. I live five minutes from, well, I don't live in Baltimore, near Baltimore, the next town over. And the Guinness Brewery, the only one in the U.S., 
is five minutes down from my house. Now they do make, they don't make the stout there. They only do that in Ireland, but they do make the Guinness Blonde right here, five minutes down the road from my house. Yep. So Annette, when you came to see me, if you made a left off the highway, you would have hit the brewery. <laughs> okay, well, I like the way that looks. That looks really good. And then we'll put the gray bubbles foam on the other guy. Oh, so now you know what the paddle is, Karen. Oh, good. Good. Nice to see you. Hello. Sometimes people like to use them to pick up embellishments. I tend to use the pointer tool or the putty end. If the embellishments are small, use that little putty end to just stick it. It comes off on the putty and then you put it down on the project. Okay, let's see what direction we want these. Right. Um, obviously, we're going to glue one down and put the other up on dimensionals, right? So, let's see. Yeah, the putty end is so helpful. Um, I think I like the amber one up on top better. Right, so, if I arrange these in the proper way, then we will see some of the weaving over here. Okay, so I'm just going to overlap them a little bit, make them go on an angle. Or maybe put the one on the bottom on top. Oh, that's better. I like that better because then the handle isn't showing through. So maybe I should put it the other way. So you have to just keep switching and trying it around. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I think maybe this way. For some reason, I like this one more in the middle. It's brighter, right? Okay, so that one's going to get glued down first. Then we'll put the dimensional dots on it. Oh, cheers. Very cute. So here's your masculine cards, guys. Well, I guess if, you're, if your guy drinks beer, you're not going to do this for your young sons, obviously, unless you make it root beer, like we said. <laughs> Oh, tip one. Ooh, that's cute. Hmm. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. It looks like it's pouring out a little bit, right? Ooh, I didn't think of that. Ooh, you know what? I am going to do try a reverse stamping on one, flip it around, and then tip them together, and they could be doing cheers. How about that? Thanks for that idea. That's wonderful. All right, so, I know, for now, I'm just going to put this one straight, but I like that tipping idea. That's a good one. Okay, let me get my dimensionals. Okay, I have a bunch of minis here that I can put around to get close to the handle, so that would be good. I like using my pick tool to pick up those minis. Well, mini dimensionals there. Reverse stamp it. Yeah. Have you done that before, Susan? I'll have to do a tutorial on that someday. Now, I'm actually going to cut a little piece to put over here. Can you see that? I hope I'm on the camera. I'm going to cut one of those dimensionals in half. Use your scissors that are just for glue. Okay. Ah, you nimble fingers. There we go. Might be overkill, but I don't know, I get a little OCD about certain things. Not everything, but some things. Okay, that's off. So I, I don't know about you, but once I get going on a card layout, and I just do one or two, then the ideas start flowing. So a lot of people say, oh, I, I'm not creative. I can't come up with ideas. Start with something you've seen before. And then just change something up. 
change the colors. I want a little bit of that handle showing, so I'm going to bring this down here. Okay, so combination, St. Patrick's Day and birthday. How about that? There you go. So I'll clean up those smudges later, but cute, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, reverse stamping. I will do a tutorial on that <laughs> sometime. You can actually flip the image in a couple different ways. So I will I will get to that. Um I'll have to make myself a note. Okay, so there we go. You know, happy birthday, cheers, happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so let's do a couple other little little ideas here with the same card. It's coffee and a card. So we're doing the same card. I'm just like to show you different versions of it. You know me. That's what I do. And like I said, you just kind of can't stop. <laughs> Sometimes you just, let me clean up the stamp and put that away. Don't want to lose that stuff. Okay. Anybody doing something particularly fun for St. Patrick's Day today? Oh, there's the phone again. You know, this this room that I'm in used to be somebody's office, so they had the phone line up here. And unfortunately, it's the base of the phone that rings, not the hand the cordless handset. So even if I remove the handset, it's still going to hear the ring. So I appreciate your patience there. My husband's kind of on it to so not let it ring too many times. <laughs> if it's spam, he'll just pick it up and hang it up right away. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we got here now. I'm going to use... This is another one I haven't used yet, so you're getting all my... Um, my guinea pigs. <laughs> right, we're going to do the same card, this time with the Fish and a Wish. This is a set that I haven't seen too many people use, but I think it's awfully cute. Again, it could be good for masculine cards or younger person cards. Um, because it's a little more fun. It isn't your flowers or, or your or too um, specific with the... Uh, um, with the theme. Like, it's not like, well, barbecue or biker or... Um, cars or whatever. All right, so I stamped all the fish in different colors that coordinate with with the designer series paper. The paper is by the bay, and these are my scraps, so that's what I'm going to be working with. Um, I stamped all the fish in the different colors because I didn't know which fish I was going to use. So I went with um, Bonnie Blue. Um, let me get them all right here. All right, they're all written here. Bami Blue Coastal Cabana. Mint Macaron, Night of Navy, Pool Party. Okay, and then there's some Sahara Sand in here as well, but we, I didn't do a Sahara, Sahara Sand fish. I wanted the brighter ones. Uh, and this coordinates with the um, Fish Builder Punch. They say builder because there are parts to it. You could actually um, punch out some fins and add it on as a dimensional thing. I'm not going to bother with that. Also, there's a way that you can punch these and stamp them or stamp them first and then punch them both at once. But again, I didn't do that because I didn't know exactly where I was going with this. So um, we're going to, I just punched them out, out on strips so that I can fit my fish right in there. Um, oh, went the wrong way. There we go. Um, and I don't, I'm not going to be wasting too much paper. So I just cut them on some of my strips. Here's one of those fish, and we're just going to try out both ones like we did with the beer. See what we see what we like. Do a sampling, right? Okay, now this one, obviously I'm going to waste some paper down here because that little fish is going to be caught up. That looks like the little goldfish cracker, doesn't it? Ooh, do those for the kids. That'll be fun. Okay, this away. And that one came out a little light, so I did it over there. So let me just do this one first. Oops, wrong way again. Just my 
I do that. I love punches. For me, it's a lot easier than getting out die cuts all the time, but I understand. I mean, I love my die cuts too, but I certainly understand the need for the die cuts sometimes as well. Okay, so we're going to pop these little guys out, and we'll have a whole school of fish to play around with. Oh, you went to Brody's, Nadine? Oh, how nice. I bet it was busy. <laughs> they always get a big crowd. Now, is it only in Mohegan Lake now? Because they used to have one up, what was it, Carmel or Brewster or something? Or is it, do they still have two locations at Brody's? It's been around forever, as long as I've lived there, I think. <laughs> at least the one in Mohegan Lake. And I grew up in that area, so it's a long time. All right, there's our school of fish. Here's our other guys that didn't get stamped. Just move those aside. All right, so we're going to do some strips. I have my card folded. And another little layer here. If anybody didn't sign in and say hello yet, make sure you do that. You'll be entered into the raffle. Okay. Oh, Mahegan Lake, Nadine. Good. So I am choosing these as we go here. This is live on the, on the spur of the moment here. And maybe I want to get some of this one with a little bit of that gold in there. That would be nice, right? So I'll cut that half inch. Just look and see what you have and, and just go with it. Don't think too hard on it because um, like I did with some of my customers the other day, we used some strips and used them on and all different combinations. And um, I think it was actually Nadine said, I didn't think all those patterns and colors that mishmash would go together, but it works. And it does. It's like a patchwork quilt. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same you know it doesn't have to go be too matchy matchy i'm going to cut this one at three and a quarter this will be one of my horizontals and i think well let me see what else i have i'm going to cut a half an inch of this one so part of what i'm trying to share with you here is just try things out. You know, like I said, people say, oh, I'm not creative. Just look around. Just look at something and then think, oh, this might work. And then just try it. All right. I, we have four different ones here. Where we go? Um, I'm going to want one light and one dark going in each direction. So let's see how this works. do that that and blue and that blue might be too close together so I might think of switching that okay so these are just some things to kind of think about and then we can put some of our fish on there and see how that goes and um you know what I need some get wells so I'm going to do sending well wishes with the fishes <laughs> well wishes with the fish. and these I didn't even put my uh, decals on yet it's not that it's that new, but it's just that when I have played with them, I just haven't gotten the decals on yet. <laughs> okay, so here's something that, another little hint I want you to be aware of. Sometimes when these get cut, let me put it on here, you can see it wasn't cut evenly. I stamp up's usually pretty good at this, but for some reason, this one got a little offset. So when I put my um decal on there i may as well just do it right now real quick this is the way i do it i peel off the whole decal and i'm going to use a little bit bigger block to make it a little easier to see i stick it on my block and then i peel it off okay this is not how the directions say to do it but this is the way i do it and some other demonstrators have discovered that as well 
All right, so now I'm going to turn this upside down, turn my block upside down, and stick the decal on that way. So I'm not holding the decal, the block is. That way I can see exactly how to line it up, and that's all good, except it was cut a little crooked. So my printing on the um, foam end there is right in the middle, but when I turn it around, it's up on the other side. So sometimes it could be slightly off and you have to remember that and compensate for that. So that's another good reason to experiment with stamping on something first. All right, so I'm gonna just put this back on my smaller block, a little easier to handle. I like to choose blocks that they don't, this where the stamps just don't just fit because the beveling on the side sometimes throws me off a little bit. The lighting is in there or it looks a little blurry on the side. So I like to choose one that's just a little bit bigger, kind of like this. So, um, so if I'm going to pretend to stamp on this line here, and if I go according to the decal, I can see that's a little high, especially on the left-hand side. And if I look closely, I can see it's a little higher over here. So I'm going to have to compensate for that and go down just a little bit. And if you have something that is pretty far off, the Stamparatus is a good way to overcome that. So I'm going to go down just a little bit on the left side, and then that's better. All right. Okay, the other option is to purposely just stamp it on an angle. <laughs> that way... No one knows if it's straight or not. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to get it straight up in the top corner. Do your stamping first. If you're stamping along, either live or with the replay, come back and post your projects in the comments. I will create another post with some pictures of what I'm doing today. And you can post them underneath in the comments. Okay. Oh, I knew I smudged that. <laughs> I touched the card before I went all the way down on it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You just know when it's going to happen. Okay. So I'm remembering to bring the left side down just a little bit. Let's see if I did it right this time. Okay. So that's better. Okay, let's put our stripes on. This one's three and a quarter. This one will be, um, I said I wanted that one. Actually, I want that one on the bottom. So I'm going to make that one just a little bit more than three and a quarter. See how you can adjust? So I'll make it three and three eighths. How about that? I'm just closer to three and a half. It doesn't matter. No rules here. That one will be down there. This one, outer one, I wanted about four and a quarter. And then this one, I mean, oh, four and three quarters. Dang. Okay, well, you know what? I have more. <laughs> I'm just going to cut another piece. That's all. It's all good. Right here. I'll use that for something else. Four and three quarters. Just because this one does matter, I need it longer so we can do that little weaving thing. And this one I'll do four and a quarter. And I'm going to use this side because there's a little bit more of the wood grain in there. It'll show up better on the white. Just little things like that to think about. And let's see what we got. Um... Hmm, okay, well that wasn't the same one, was it? Ah, uh, silly me. I need to find that other paper. Oh, here we go. This is the one I meant to cut. Four and three quarters. Too much beautiful paper around, right? Half inch. And sometimes you just create your scraps instead of using what you already have. Four and three quarters. Now we should be good to go. Let's get those other guys out of the way. And there we go. 
Okay. Yep. I'm going to weave. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Thank you. I got my team rooting for me there, helping me out. We all need, we get by with a little help from our friends, right? Okay. So we're going to put glue just on the top half here. And I'm going to bring that down a little bit to give me a little more room for the weaving. And then it gives me a little interest up here. Oh, so that is a little crooked there. Oh, well, don't tell anybody. You get the idea, right? I'm going to make this one go up a little bit higher. As I can. Put some glue on here. And then I can glue this one down because it's going, the horizontal one's going over that. And this one's still loose. So that will go underneath there. Get the little weave. You can do this with more strips too. Fill your card. And like I said, if you didn't want to Oh, I want that a little closer, I think. Kind of similar gap between. Okay, if you if you want a, not as much of a layer here, um, you don't want to layer at all, you can just do a bigger, bigger strips. Play around with it. Another idea is you can turn all this kind of on an angle as well, too, and have more of a V shape here. Maybe I'll try that on one of the cards. All right, this is going on the card front. And we'll put our little fishies on. Okay. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're 11 o'clock already. Well, we had our problems starting up, didn't we? <laughs> oh, it's okay. All right, I was looking for my glue eraser. I couldn't find that. All right, let's add some fish. Definitely want some of the dark ones. We want some of the little guys going the other way. One thing that's nice about these, they are pretty symmetrical, so you can have them going either direction. See that? Either way. So I love that. Have some guys... One the other way. Let's have one in a different color. Maybe another one this way. Look how cute. I like that. Or I don't want it them I don't want to have two and two. Um no, I like these guys going both the same way, then I can overlap them a little bit. Put the darker one in the back. That way it won't overwhelm the one in the front. All right, I'm going to leave it like that so that we can see that weave in there. All right, so carefully I'll take this out. This will get glued down. And here we go. If you're signing on new, if you just joined us not too long ago, remember to just say hello. That way you get entered into the raffle for a prize. I'll draw it later, spin the wheel. Okay, this one we're going to pop up with dimensional dots. The knees will be good to get in those small places. Put one on the tail. And another one right here. And I'll show you my other ideas, but I'm not going to do them live. I will finish them up and put them on another post so you can see. All right, and I think we'll maybe keep this one down and the other one up to show the depth, right? There we go. I think that's cute. Four. 
There we go. Yeah. Um, thank you. I'm glad you like that, Linda. Thank you. Oh, it's one of those days all the spam calls are coming in. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to cover up that little smudge there. I don't have to get my eraser out. Okay. I think that came out really cute. <laughs> See, just kind of winging it as we go here. All right, so we're just going to finish up because we are over over an hour. Um, so that's the wishes. There's the one with the beer for St. Patrick's Day and I'll show you the others that I had in line to do and I'll finish them up another time and post them um, and a post above the video here. So another one I'm going to be using is the Flowers of Friendship. And um, I'm going to be using the black and white strips. And actually, I want to show you another technique, but we'll have to save that for another day. And I'm using um, perfectly penciled black strips. I love black and white with a pop of color. So this is what we're going to have here. Pale Papaya, Polish Pink, Retiring Colors. And then we'll have our sentiment here. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I did try stamping on white and then went over it with a blending brush. And that look, looks nice for a different project, but I liked the bolder look by stamping on the cardstock itself. And this comes with a coordinating punch as well. So I'm going to show you a trick another time as to how you can, if you want to make a bunch of these, a nice way to line them up easily and be able to punch them all at once. So that was um, one other idea. And here's the last idea. Using Abigail Rose Designer Series paper, keeping a more monotone look. The only stamping is the sentiment. I have my strips. And I cut a couple of the flowers from the Designer Series paper. And then they will go on here. All right, so just another different look. So you have something more subtle. You have more bold and graphic. Oh my goodness gracious. And then we have our, our fun one with the fishies. And we have the, the cheers for the birthday or St. Patrick's Day. So a lot of different looks you can get with the same thing. So um, let me know what you like. Let me, let me know, know what was helpful. I can, um, let me know what you want to know in the future definitely reverse stamping i i can understand is a good thing to learn and um and um we'll we'll go from here so post your designs in the post like i said i'm going to create a new one i'll take pictures of these once they're done and then you can post under there or you can post under the video and um Invite your friends to come next time, and we'll see you next Friday. You love the St. Patrick's Day one? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, let me know which one's your favorite. Okay, they are all be good depending on who you're giving them to, right? That's the other thing you have to consider. Yes, you have to be happy with your own work, but you also have to consider the person you're giving the card to, right? Um and, you know, so for some cases, you know, this one might be nice or this one. So you, you never know. But anyway, thanks for joining on. What is reverse stamping? That's when I will be able to make this beer mug go in the other direction. And um, like we said, I could actually tip them and make them like do a little cheers. So that that will be fun. So I will. Oh, I got your interest now. Now everyone's curious. Reverse stamping. Woo. Okay, we'll try that one. I'll show you how to do that. I will try to remember to maybe do that next time. Okay, guys? Alrighty. Oh, you'll hang on to the end, Debbie. Oh, aren't you sweet? <laughs> well, actually, I do have some things to do, too. I have an appointment coming up. So, um, anyway, well, um, thanks for joining in, and I, I appreciate you coming on. Okay. All right. Thanks, Krista. Take care. I'll read all of your comments later. If I missed any, I'll answer any questions. You can add to the comments later if you want as well. Love you, Annette. Thanks for hopping on there. All right. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye, right, everybody.